Hello everybody, this is Helen Yancey and I thought I would give you some pointers on how to make your own backgrounds so that you can use them again and again if you so choose. And the best way I know to do that is in Corel Painter. I have Corel Painter 2016. And just to show you how I lay it out, here's my recent brushes up here. Um, and I really enjoy having them up there. Uh, they also will show up at the top of your category list and your variant list, but I do like having them visible to me all the time. Uh, I keep my navigator out. I keep my color wheel out. Um, this shows my mixer and my color set libraries. Honestly, I don't normally keep those out. I need my layers. Um, and as you can see, there's something already open here. Uh, and I have channels up here, but it isn't always there. I do use a workspace and my workspace that I'm happiest with is the one that I am going to show you right now. And that's the nice thing about Corel Painter is it can you can change your workspaces. Um, and I'm going to also now change my arrangement of my palette. Here's what I use. My color wheel is absolutely essential all the time. It's got to be there. Blending, general, dab type, dynamic speckle when I want it. I keep that out. Brush calibration for me is absolutely essential. Um, and I enable brush calibration on each individual brush. The navigator is there. And of course my layers and my clone source. That is, if I'm going to use cloning, I need that. For what we're going to do today, not so much. Okay, let's do something simple. I'm going to open just a piece of paper. File, New. And I want my paper, because I'm just going to make um, a new background and keep it nice and simple. I don't I don't want a whole lot of color. I'd like this one to be on the warm side, but more neutral. So that's our color now for our eight by 10 by 300. With eight by 10 by 300, I can adapt that size and that background for almost anything, all the way up to a bigger size or a lesser size if I wish to. The paper I'm going to select this time is Sandy Pastel Paper but you can use canvas, you can use um, retrofed. There's so many things in here, uh, many, many options. These are the ones I'm gonna use today. So, okay, we have a very pink looking background um, and I'm going to show you what I'm gonna do and give you a list of brushes. So here's what we're going to end up with or something on this order. The brushes I'm going to use for this, they're all in the artist category first one is the real clumpy broad bristle second is grainy blender third the blender bristle all of them are in the artist category and then i can just select command or control zero and make that go back to um, the size i want it to be in fact i'm going to make it a lot smaller just so it gets out of my way and you can still see where we're going so okay we have a very pink background here probably pinker than it needs to be but it doesn't matter i'm going to start with my real clumpy broad bristle brush i am the first thing i'm going to do is reset it only because i always do i always reset the brush when i start so i know exactly what i'm dealing with and where I want it to go, what I want it to do. Now, at this point, I'm going to pick a color, which will be, oh, a darker color. Oh, I love that brush. Now I'm going to make it much bigger because I don't want to spend the rest of my life making a background. I want it big and I'm going to start. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And you can get brush strokes, lots of brush strokes. Now you can go either all in one direction. And if you do that, then you can make a sketchy type background behind things. 
and use more than one color, or you can go in multi-directional way and have brush strokes doing all this kind of thing. And I love this brush because it acts like a real brush and it blends with what's underneath it. Um, it has feature, which means it has some brush strokes. Now I, or brush hairs of the brush. Now I can increase that by increasing the feature, but right now I'm just going to leave it right where it is and show you the beginning of a very quick eight by 10 by 300 background. And because in any good art piece, well, that's, that's a little bit too general, but if you, if you want to be secure in your composition and in the way things look, um, usually a flat art piece, whatever it may be, is going to have outside edges and corners of similar and equal density or value. So I'm starting out just by simply going around and I want to make sure that I'm covering everything. I am I'm not working on layers. I could, but I'm not. I have a very big brush and we're just quickly going to make a warm and cool background that we can use on all kinds of things. Portraits, well, a portrait especially for what I'm doing right now. But for those of you that are photographers, coming up with backgrounds for your clients and having new ones all the time, um, that can get pricey. Making it in Painter and adapting it for your use is a whole lot less pricey. Now, I'm still going to use this same brush, but if you notice, I added a cool. I went to my color wheel and the density is the same, meaning the amount are light or dark. I did not change where it is on the triangle, which means the density and the amount of uh, gray that's added to the color is pretty much the same. So what we're going to do now is add the cool around the outside edge. I'm doing it quickly and you're thinking, well, um, if I use this with a portrait, it's going to cover up a lot of it. Yeah, it will. Um, that's okay. You can adapt and you can use this for so many things. Now I'm going to go to a lighter warm color and I'm just scattering it around here and there, just scattering it around. I haven't changed my brush at all. It's still a, a real big brush. And my center is pretty warm actually for people. So I'm gonna cool it down a little bit, but you'll notice I'm not covering everything, not at all. And then I'm going to go to my grainy blender, which is still in the artist oils category. Grainy blender, and I'm that's too small. I'm gonna make it bigger. And I'm going to do the same thing, I'm, except that I'm not adding any color now. No color whatsoever. And I'm just moving around. My uh, stylus is pretty much on the tablet most of the time. And I'm a lazy artist. That brush is just way too small. So I want to get this background and get it where I want it to be color-wise before I do a whole lot else to it. So we're going to lose some of our texture here, but we're, we can always add texture again. So I am very quickly running around my warms and cools, very quickly making a background. You know how much your backgrounds cost if you buy them ready-made and photograph on them. And of course I have those, but honestly, I have very few because if I want to change my background, I simply have to pay attention to the way I've lit my subject and use a background accordingly. And of course, I can change the lighting. I do wanna make sure that I can see the edges all the way around. See, I'll pull it out, cause I don't wanna miss an edge that I'd have to fix later. But you can see how quickly we can make a new background and I can put anything on this. Now on this background, I started just with a plain piece of paper, if you will, or canvas, if you will, um, and a, uh, put a color in it when I was working with it, which means if I erase on this canvas, I'm gonna go to that basic color that I selected for my paper color. 
So it won't go to white like it will if you have a white piece of paper. It's going to, if you use an eraser, it's going to go to your basic paper color. So I'm already liking this. Actually, I like it better than the one I already did. That's the fun thing. We've worked for just a few minutes and we have brush strokes, colors, 8 by 10, and the thing that is just super cool and nice is now I can add my subject either by um, putting the subject on a layer and uh, working around that layer, or I can clone my subject into my background. Uh, you, have, you have so many options, so many options. You could have a sunset here um, and use your sunset as a background. You could have city scene, whatever, and then paint over it and make it painterly which is just, you know, how can't get better than that. Now, my last brush is um, the Blender Bristle. And I'm going to go to that now, which is somewhere. There it is. There's my Blender Bristle. Now, the Blender Bristle has, um, right now it's got a clone color in it. I don't want it with clone color. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to make this bigger uh, because I'm lazy, sort of. Um, and the grain is down to zero, but that, if you remember, I tapped on the uh, reset tool to make sure that this is now going to be where Corel put it in the first place. And now I'm going to work with some texture here. And I can add or take away texture as I please. I like the brush. It has a lot of character to it. So I can add texture with this brush. I can add texture with oh, so many of the other brushes in Corel Painter. Um, and I like, I like a background to stay back there. So I want texture, but I don't want to overdo the texture. And I'm playing all with one color here, but it will blend as I go because that's what artist oil category does. If you leave your stylus right on that wonderful Wacom tablet, it blends as you go. Every time I pick it up and put it back down, I'm going to get another brush load of color. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. So right now, this is making me very happy, actually, so I can see how quickly I can make a background. Now, my subject's going to go in here somewhere, so I'm going to work around this a little bit more. I am not lifting my stylus from the tablet at all right now. Not, not at all. I'm not lifting it. Now, when I come around uh, here, there, I lifted it again. And because I am lifting it again, I'm going to add a darker color in there. Now I'm lifting it and putting it down a lot. Now I'll leave it down. Okay, we have used just three brushes and we've got a background that we can work with. And we will. Now I want to show you just for fun what you can do with this very same background. First, we would save it. Okay, um, let's... Let's do that. Untitled, well, let's don't call it untitled. Let's call it background one dash zero zero zero, which means I just have to do iterative save and it'll save it a new one the next time. So I'm saving it as a Photoshop file right now. Uh, but right now I have one layer. I have lovely colors on it. I like this. And I'm going to go to Effects, Tonal Control, and Adjust Colors. Now I can do, did you see what happened right there? It went to Uniform Color, and I have now, I didn't expect that. There it is. I have now a beautiful grayscale background. Now I can save that by just doing Iterative Save, which is... Option or Alt, Control or Command, S. Do it. 
Oh, I guess I can't do it unless this is gone. Okay, I'm going to just click OK on that. Alt, Command, or Control S. And now, see the title on my background? Now that's a whole new background. And it's saved. The other file is 000. This one is 001. I love iterative save. I use it all the time. But I can still do an undo and go back to where I was. So I am going to now go to Tonal Control again, and I'm going to adjust selected colors. Now this time I want to just select, um, let's see, that warm color in the center. I want to change that. My range is, let's move this over so you can see. I can change the range so it'll go further. Come on, do it. I can feather it so that it stays soft, saturation, and feather, value, and feather, and then hue. And I'm only changing that color, except that it, there it is. Ugh, that's kind of awful. But it's only changing that color. See, there, my blues and my browns are staying the same. It's only this color that it's changing. Now, imagine all the, well, that's really ugly, but imagine all the backgrounds you could come up with with just one beginning point. How about we go low key? And we change the hue on that one. Ugh, I still don't like that. Okay, and then what if we go to paper, and now it's going to use our paper as well. And what if we want to make this really low key? That's still an ugly color, Helen. It doesn't change. It's still an ugly color. But can you see now I have, let me enlarge this for you. Now I have a whole lot of texture, probably way more than I would ever want, but I can either fade it and it's pretty much gone back to the um, other color. I can even do an iterative save there. Now I have two. Now I'll have both of those are saved. I can go back to Effects, Adjust Colors. I can do, I really, I really like that. I'm glad I saved it. Um, however, I'm going to bring that back. This is adjusting all the colors now. And bring the value down and I can make myself a beautiful low, lower key that way. And then if I want to darken that center, I can, but thinking that I'm going to put an image there, I'm not going to darken everything until I'm finished, until I know what it is I'm going to do. I'm saving that one too. I like it. So now I can pick, a, I can either put a new layer on this. I use it down here to do it, but you could go to the menu and put a new layer on. And now I'm going to go to clone source and I am going to open up something, open source, and I will open Taylor. Taylor is my granddaughter. And can you see that? If I, if I show source image, there's the source image. And that is very nice to be able to do because now I can see exactly what I'm doing. Let me move Taylor over and make her smaller so I can see what I'm doing. There. Yes, I know. There. Now I can use a cloner 
um, I can use just to get her in here. I can go to, um, well, I can go to regular cloners. And there they are. I'm going to choose soft cloner um, just to get started. And see the nice thing about, can you see the crosshatch here over here? The nice thing about having your image show is I can bring Taylor back into my painting and I can see where I'm going. And I like that a lot. I don't want to go too far. Obviously, I already did. Um, but because I'm on a layer, I can erase that. So I can bring Taylor. Taylor is my granddaughter, so you can all go, oh, isn't she pretty? Taylor is also the model at a younger age on my um, on the portrait brushes pack and the portrait brushes video. Okay, can you see how easy this is to bring in an image on top of your new background. Now this is a really universally um, easy to use. I'm gonna make this. Remember I told you I'm a lazy artist. I have this at 100% opacity and it's a big brush because I don't wanna waste my time or yours. Okay, I'm gonna bring just that much in um, and then I will use my eraser I love my, and I, I will tell you very honestly, um, when I am using other software, you know that other software, I use eraser very little, uh, and I use masks and all that stuff, which is okay. But in, when I'm in painter, I am painting and I don't want to mask off something that I already know I don't want. So I am much more inclined to use the eraser and see, I am, I can do that because I'm on a layer above. Now I left off some of her hair and she wouldn't like that a bit, but that will give you an idea of how easy it is to do a beautiful, subtle portrait type background with Corel Painter. See you again.